start lecture 5-2 on superposition. Superposition is another circuit analysis technique that can be very helpful in analyzing circuits that's based upon the principle of linearity. Superposition states that if you want to find the voltage or current through a resistor, you can find the voltage or current due to each of the independent voltage or current sources acting alone and then sum them together. Please note that superposition is only used to find voltage and current. Because power is a nonlinear relationship based upon I squared R or V squared over R, you cannot use superposition to find the power delivered to a resistor. What are the steps to apply superposition? The first thing you do is to redraw the circuit with each independent source turned on one at a time. So if you have two independent sources, that's two different circuits. If you have three, that's three, and so on. Step two is to apply circuit analysis to find the relevant voltage or current in the circuit. We give it a name such as V prime, I prime, V double prime, I double prime, in order to distinguish it from the voltage and current due to the full circuit. You repeat step two for each of the independent sources, and then you use the principle of superposition in order to find the total response. For example, V would be equal to V prime plus V double prime, or I would be equal to I prime plus I double prime. If you do need to find the power in the circuit, you would first sum the voltages, sum the currents, get the final answer for the voltage or current, and then do V times I, I squared R, or V squared over R. As a brief review of what we discussed in prior lectures, remember to turn off a voltage source you replace it with a short circuit so that it becomes zero volts. And to turn off a current source, you replace it with an open circuit so that it becomes zero amps. Okay, let's apply superposition to solve the following concept question. In the following circuit, all of the light bulbs are identical. So that means we could model them all as the same resistance. When the switch is closed, volt the voltage across bulb C becomes so when the switch is closed, I have two identical voltage sources and three identical resistors. So I'm going to draw this circuit twice. I'll use R to represent the light bulbs. R, R, and R. And on this left one, the left voltage source will be on and the right voltage source will be off. I will call the voltage across the middle re resistor, which is bulb C, VC prime. Then I'll draw the circuit again, and this time the left voltage source will be off and the right voltage source will be on. And I'll label the identical bulbs R, R, and R, and I'll label the voltage across that middle one VC double prime. So I can actually use the voltage divider to find VC prime on the left circuit. It's R in parallel with R divided by R plus R in parallel with R times V1. R in parallel with R is the product over the sum, or R squared over 2R divided by R plus R squared over 2R times V1. That simplifies to 1 third V1. Since these circuits are symmetric, I should be able to quickly see that there's no need to actually do the analysis again but what I'll see is that VC double prime is also one third V1. So applying the principle of superposition, VC will be equal to VC prime plus VC double prime or one third V1 plus one third V1, which equals two thirds V1. That can also be written as approximately 0.67 V1. Therefore, when the switch closes, the voltage across bulb C becomes two thirds V1, or the answer is letter D. Okay, let's try another example. Here we have a circuit that has two independent sources and one dependent source. So the way to apply superposition to this circuit is to redraw the circuit twice once with each independent source on. The dependent source stays on all the time. So the first one, I'm going to have the 20 volt source on, and I'll copy down the 10 ohm resistor. 
This will be called V naught prime to distinguish it from V naught. There will be an open circuit where the six amp current source was. And we have a 40 ohm resistor. The dependent source is now labeled 2V naught prime. And we have a 20 ohm resistor. And the current through that 20 ohm resistor is going to be called I naught prime. I'll redraw the circuit one more time. And now I'll turn the 20 volt source off and turn the six amp current source on. I'll label the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor V naught double prime. The current source is six amps. The resistor is 40 ohms. The dependent source is two V naught double prime. And then we have a 20 ohm resistor and the current through the 20 ohm resistor is I naught double prime. For the circuit on the left, in order to find I0 prime, we'll use KVL, where the loop current is already labeled I0 double prime. So we'll have 10 I0 prime plus 20 I0 prime minus 2 V0 prime plus 40 I0 prime minus 20 equals 0. So because we have a dependent source, we're also going to have a constraint equation. The constraint equation is V naught prime is equal to 10 I naught prime. So we have two equations and two unknowns. And when we solve, we get V naught prime is equal to 24 volts. I naught prime is equal to 2.4 amps. Okay, now for the second circuit. We have several choices. We could do no voltage or mesh. I'll stick with mesh and I'm going to label the clockwise current in that top mesh, I. The bottom current is already labeled I naught double prime. This makes the six amp current source a super mesh. Because this is a super mesh, we're going to have a KCL equation and a KVL equation. So the KCL equation is going to be I naught prime I naught double prime minus I is equal to six. The KVL equation, starting with the 10 ohm resistor, is going to be 10 I plus 20 I naught double prime minus two V naught double prime plus 40 I naught double prime, and that equals zero. Because we have a dependent source, once again, we're going to have a constraint equation the constraint equation is V naught double prime equals 10 I. So we have three equations and three unknowns. So the answers for these three equation, three variables is I is equal to negative 7.2 amps. V naught double prime is equal to negative 72 volts. And I naught double prime is equal to negative 1.2 amps. So now to find, so using superposition, V naught is equal to V naught prime plus V naught double prime, which equals negative 48 volts. And I naught equals I naught prime plus I naught double prime, which equals 1.2 amps. Okay, let's try another example. In this example, we have a 75 volt source and a six amp source. So I'm going to draw this circuit twice, once with the 75 volts on, and I'll label the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor V prime. And then I'll draw it once with the six amp current source on. And I'll label the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor V double prime. And then I'll analyze each of the circuits. I can actually use the voltage divider for the circuit on the right. 
I can use the voltage divider because V prime is the voltage across 20 in parallel with 8 plus 12. So the numerator is going to be 20 in parallel with 8 plus 12 divided by 5 plus 20 in parallel with 8 plus 12 times 75, which equals 10 over 15 times 75. So V prime is equal to 50 volts. For the circuit on the right, I can't do the voltage divider. I can do the node voltage method. I'll label ground at the bottom. The node on the left is labeled V double prime, and I'll label the node on the right V1. So when I write the KCL equation at V double prime, I get V double prime over five plus V double prime over 20 plus V double prime minus V1 over eight equals zero. When I do KCL at V1, I have V1 over 12 plus V1 minus V double prime over eight plus six equals zero. So that's two equations and two unknowns. So V1 is equal to negative 36 volts and V double prime is equal to negative 12 volts. So finally, V is equal to V prime plus V double prime, which is 50 minus 12. So V is equal to 38 volts. Let's do one final demonstration of superposition in order to find the power delivered to the five ohm resistor in the following circuit. First note that we have four independent sources. So what that means is that we're going to have four circuits. So let me draw the first one with the 10 volt source on. So I'm gonna have a four ohm resistor in series with a four ohm resistor. Then I have a five ohm resistor here and the 10 volt source here. The voltage across the resistor is going to be V prime. The current through the resistor is going to be I prime. Now let's draw one with the 18 volt source on. So here I'm going to have 18 volts, four ohm resistor and the six ohm resistor and the five ohm resistor. And the voltage across the five ohm is going to be V double prime and the current of the five ohm is going to be I double prime. Now let's turn each of the current sources on. I'll do the three amps first. So I have four ohms and six ohms. And at the bottom I have the five ohm resistor. And at the bottom I have the five ohm resistor and I'll put the three amps here. I'll label V triple prime, the voltage across the five ohm resistor, and I triple prime, the current of the five ohm resistor. The last circuit I'm going to draw is going to be with the two amp source on. And I'll label the voltage across the five ohm resistor V four prime, and the current I four prime. Okay, looking at the bottom left circuit, I can use the voltage divider in order to find V prime. So V prime would be equal to five over four plus six plus five times 10, which equals 10 over three volts. So then since the voltage and current are related by Ohm's law, I prime would be V prime divided by five or two over three amps. I can also use the voltage divider for the second circuit. However, note that the positive is on the left, so the current is really being delivered to the left. So this one, V double prime, is negative five over four plus six plus five times 18, which is equal to negative six volts. So the current I double prime would be equal to negative six over five amps. So these second two circuits, I can use the current divider. If you note here that the three amps is delivering the current to a four ohm resistor in parallel with the six and five in series. So that's four in parallel with 11. 
However, note that since the current is being delivered to that left node, it's actually going the opposite direction. So this current divider relationship is going to have a negative sign. And it's going to be negative four in parallel with five plus six divided by five plus six times three, which equals negative four over five amps. And because of Ohm's law relationship, I can multiply that by five to get the voltage. So the voltage will be negative four volts. I can also use the current divider to find I to the fourth power prime. So that's going to be I raised to the fourth power. This one is a positive relationship. And what it's going to be is the four ohm and six ohm resistors in series in parallel with the five divided by five times two. So that's 10 in parallel with five divided by five times two, which is four over three amps. And V to the fourth prime is going to be equal to five times that, which is 20 over three volts. So now we're ready to find V. V is equal to V prime plus V double prime plus V triple prime plus V quadruple prime. And when you add all those numbers up, you get zero volts. Similarly, I is equal to I prime plus I double prime plus I triple prime plus I to the fourth prime, and that equals zero amps. So remember, the power can be found once you have the sum. You cannot sum powers using superposition to get overall power. You have to do it at the end. So the power delivered to the five ohm resistor is voltage times current, which in this case is zero watts. This concludes our lecture on superposition.